Hello and welcome to my channel. I haven't done any work in graphite pencil in a while, so I decided to do a drawing of this wolf and I'm going to be using matte graphite pencils. First I'm going to do the sketch and while I'm doing that I'm going to talk a little bit about the composition, the materials and the reference. So the head has a bit of a tilt from right to left and my light source is going to be on the left. The head is going to be taking up most of the paper so it's like a portrait of a wolf and I'm just trying to position the head properly before I draw any of the smaller details. The paper I'm using is a master touch sketching paper which has a bit of a tooth it's neither too rough nor too smooth. I feel like it's perfect for working with graphite pencils. The size is about 8 times 11 inches and the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Pitt graphite matte pencils. These are slightly different than your conventional graphite pencils because they don't have graphite shine. They are supposed to be matte and they are quite a bit darker than regular graphite pencils. Not quite as charcoal, obviously, uh, but still darker and less reflective than regular graphite pencils. I'm going to talk about them and their properties a bit later, but now let's focus on the drawing process. I'm starting with the ear on the left, drawing around the edge, and you can see how the edge that I'm drawing, I'm drawing a bunch of short marks to imitate the appearance of short fur. This is a furry animal, so the, one of the most important things will be trying to get the texture of the fur to look, to look right, to look realistic. And when you're doing that, it's important to remember two things. First, you need to make sure that the length of your strokes, the length of your pencil strokes, matches the length of the fur. And you also need to make sure that the direction of your strokes matches the direction of the fur, the direction in which the fur grows. Now as I'm drawing this slightly longer fur here on the side of the head, you can see how I'm kind of varying my stroke a little bit or I'm varying the angle uh, a little bit rather so that it doesn't look too uniform and I'm try trying to kind of form clumps of uh, which taper near the end. After that I'm just going to move on with the background because I'm going to have a little bit of value here in the background. It's going to be a, a vague, out of focus, blurry background with no specific details or shapes in it. It is just there to create a bit of depth in my drawing. I'm doing some blending with a Q-tip. Q-tips work pretty well both with conventional graphite pencils and these uh, matte graphite pencils. Now uh, let me talk a little bit more about the properties of these pencils because uh, this might be a good moment to talk about that. Uh, because when it comes to blending I find that regular graphite pencils are a little bit better at blending because uh, they're a little bit softer and they do feel a little bit softer when you use them these uh, matte graphite pencils they feel uh, a little bit harder more like colored pencils maybe rather than graphite pencils but they still do blend pretty well so now I'm working on the inner part of the ear here and here we have some longer hair growing closer to this middle part of the ear and then kind of getting shorter and shorter towards the outer edge of the ear and this middle part of the ear where the opening is is going to be darker. Uh, it's going to be surrounded or covered with some lighter longer hair. I'm going to use a combination of pencils here to a layer that here but I'm also gonna have to use my erasers at one point so back to what I was saying about pencils for the most part these matte graphite pencils can do whatever the regular pencils can do 
but I do feel like regular graphite pencils are just a little bit easier to blend. Maybe also uh, a bit easier to erase, but that depends on um, some other factors, how much you've pressed against the paper, and um, I'm not really sure. I've done a review of these pencils, I have a separate video of that, I'm gonna put the link in the end screen if you want to check that out. So I, I did that drawing of an elephant to test these pencils and I thought they performed pretty well. Uh, as you can see now I'm using my erasers to draw some of these fine uh, white lines on the ear and now I'm gonna move on to the eye. So I zoomed in I, and I slowed down a little bit and now I switched to one of the darkest pencils I have. This is 14B, this is the darkest pencil and my set and that's because this area around the eyes, the skin around the eyes and the tear duct is very dark, it's almost uh, completely black so I'm going to use my darkest pencil for it and I'm going to use the same pencil for the pupil as well so uh, the set that I bought has eight pencils and the darkest one like I said is 14B so I'm drawing the eye here and I first reserve the white space by drawing a circle around that reflection or that catch light in the eye because I don't want to cover that while shading and then I drew the pupil with that 14B and then I worked around it with a 6B shading the rest of the iris this allows me to create a nice contrast between the pupil and the iris and of course between the catch light and the iris and the catch light and the pupil itself it's very important to have those contrasts and value but the catch light needs to be very bright and if you want it to be bright you need to keep it uh, white or almost completely white and uh, this is difficult to achieve with erasers that's why it's better to reserve the white space you just draw uh, a small circular shape or whatever the shape of the reflection you want it to be and then you work around it because if you tried using your erasers you wouldn't get that clean edge you wouldn't get that clean contrast and also you probably wouldn't be able to get it to look quite as light as it is now now I'm gonna work a little bit more on the fur and I'm doing a bit more shading on on this grayish part of the fur in this top part of the head now if you look at the wolf's fur it's a combination of black and white hairs that makes it look gray and uh, the reason why I made this part here a little bit darker is because it's going to be easier for me to shade it I can't really draw every single hair so I have to find a way to create that illusion of volume and density and that's why I had to shade that area of gray hair so that I would avoid drawing every single hair and then on top of that I drew some darker clumps of hair uh, of fur rather and you can see how I'm trying to match both the length and the direction of the fur because if you look at the reference you will see that the fur around the eyes here in this eyebrow area kind of grows in a curved line almost forming a semi-circle semi and I try to reflect that in my drawing as well and as I drew these clumps of fur, these darker clumps of fur in the forehead area I try to group them together so that they taper a little bit near the top so basically I'm trying to achieve a fairly realistic appearance of the fur even though with graphite pencils this can be a little bit more time consuming than it is with charcoal in my opinion I think that these uh, graphite pencils not just conventional graphite pencils but these matte graphite pencils as well because they are fairly similar in the way they behave other than the, uh, the lack of graphite shine obviously uh, they do behave in a similar way and they are a bit slower to work with than charcoal and some other uh, some other types of media so they are great for details and there there might be some types of subjects uh, where they really excel but when you have to draw furry subjects such as this one I think they require a bit more patience they require a bit more patience because 
blending doesn't work quite as well as it does uh, with charcoal and I want to stress that this is not uh, because I'm using these matte graphite pencils if I were working with regular graphite pencils I would be facing uh, the same uh, limitations the same problems because graphite is simply uh, slower to work with than charcoal but one of the main advantages of these pencils and this is wonderful about graphite pencils in, in general is that they give you a lot of opportunity to draw these finer details with great precision and to create these uh, fine textures that no other pencil can produce really uh, now I'm working on this forehead area trying to imitate that appearance of uh, short fur and uh, like I said because I can't draw every single hair I will have to try to create an illusion of volume sometimes doing a bit of shading sometimes doing a bit of blending you can see how I'm trying to vary the direction of my strokes a little bit so that the fur doesn't look too uniform because I can't really draw a group of parallel lines so I kind of vary both the shape and the angle a little bit and that makes it appear a little bit more realistic I'm shading the rest of the background here on the left side and I don't know if I mentioned already but my light source is on the left uh, so uh, I forgot to say a few words about the reference photo the reference photo is going to be in the description if you want to check it out and for the reference I picked one of those free images of wolves from the Pixabay but I modified it slightly because uh, I wanted to make some changes I uh, flipped it horizontally I made it black and white and I made the right side a bit darker because I wanted to increase that contrast now the reason why I did that the reason why I flipped it was because I know that other people are gonna use that free reference photo plus I wanted the left side to be the light side of the animal because um, it would, be, it, it would be kind of easier for me, I knew it would be easier for me to shade the right side to make that a bit darker because I normally work from left to right so no particular reason other than that <clears throat> and uh, I also made some other changes like I said I tried to make that uh, right side uh, additionally darker so that there would be a little bit more contrast between the light side and the shadow side. Moving on to the snout area here, I'm drawing the nose and for the nose I'm going to use my darker pencils. I'm going to use a combination of a 10B and a 14B because this is one of the darkest parts of the portrait. So far so good I think because the fur looks pretty good all you have to remember is to stick to those two general rules uh, which is that you have to make sure that, you, that the length of your strokes matches the length of the fur that you're trying to draw and that the direction of the strokes matches the direction in which the fur grows. Of course that realistic texture of the fur is not enough to draw a realistic looking portrait of, a, of an animal uh, one of the most important things obviously if not the most important thing is capturing those larger contrasts uh, which explain to the viewer which ex which explain the shape uh, of the head and the shape of the wolf's body and normally <clears throat> I'm moving on to the other eye here I'm going to do the same thing work with these uh, darker pencils first leave uh, leave a bit of white space for the catch light and then work around it so normally artists recommend uh, that you first establish those larger contrasts and then work on the details so basically you should work from uh, the larger relationships towards the smaller details uh, that doesn't always have to be the case you can sometimes break that rule and here because uh, the graphite pencils uh, they allow you to uh, put in all these details and uh, work and they kind of force you to work with a slower pace uh, I felt that it would maybe may a little bit better and less frustrating for me to work bit by bit moving from segment from one segment to the other now you can see in this part of the drawing process 
I decided to establish the shadow side. So my approach is kind of a mixture of these two approaches. Sometimes people start with the details, sometimes they start with these bigger, bigger relationships. Generally, more experienced artists recommend these uh, establishing these larger contrasts first. So I kind of used a little bit of both and here in this part of the drawing process I established the shadow area on the right. But as you can see uh, this is not as easy to do with graphite as it is with charcoal because with charcoal you don't even have to use much pressure and you don't need much building up. You can just establish a really large dark area very quickly because charcoal is so easy to move around and so easy to blend. With the graphite on the other hand establishing these larger relationships takes quite a bit more time and uh, sometimes uh, using graphite pencils in such a way would defeat uh, the purpose of using graphite pencils. It would kind of nullify their advantages and the main advantage of the graphite pencils is the ability to uh, uh, draw these fine textures, these fine details, to use their cleanliness and their precision. So if you use the same approach by uh, creating this big mess and establishing those larger contrasts first, I, I believe that would kind of defeat the purpose of um, using graphite pencils. I believe that um, maybe it's better to work at a slower pace and kind of move segment by segment. This takes a little bit more patience and it also requires your awareness of those larger relationships because you can get caught up into drawing this fur very easily and you can forget about shading the larger elements uh, but uh, once you get enough experienced when working with graphite you can kind of uh, step back from your drawing every now and then and you can look if maybe certain parts of the body or in this case certain parts of the head need a little bit more shading if they need to be made a little bit darker etc. Uh, so uh, this was my approach here uh, obviously different people would choose to do things differently uh, but I just felt that this would work and it it has worked for me. Now here on the snout area near the nose the fur gets really really short and it gets so short that it's almost impossible to imitate that appearance of short fur. So one of the things I like to use is I like to pick one of the softer pencils or darker pencils and I like to just uh, drag it using the broad side of the pencil and I like to drag it and allow it to create a bit of texture of its own and I can use that fine texture to imitate the appearance of really short hair and of course here and there I can also add some suggestions of these uh, shorter hairs using really short marks and using a combination of these two approaches I can uh, create a fairly realistic looking fur, short fur because generally I feel like drawing short fur is far more challenging than drawing longer fur because when you're drawing longer fur you can just pull these longer strokes and then use your blending tools but when you have a shorter fur to deal with uh, there's no way of avoiding these uh, bunch of really short marks. But like I said, I'm trying to draw some suggestions uh, of these shorter marks and kind of complement that uh, with, uh, with a bit of texture here and there. And I'm kind of hoping that these two things combined uh, will produce the appearance of the fur that I like. And uh, of course, I'm doing that in order to avoid uh, having to draw every single hair because that would be very time consuming and that's not really the type of uh, drawings that I like to do. I don't really like to draw photorealistic drawings, I just like to draw uh, realistic drawings that kind of look detailed and I like to put in a lot of these textures and illusions of detail to trick the eye into thinking that I've spent many many hours drawing this when in, when in fact it took about three hours probably I think 
Anyway, speaking of the length of the footage, uh, I want to remind you that if you want to see longer videos and if you want to see full length videos, narrated videos with a lot more uh, explanations or with, uh, with slower footage, you should check out my Patreon. You can find a lot more content there. Uh, now I'm moving on to this right side of the head and you, as you can see on the side of the head again we have an area of longer fur and also the fur is a little bit darker in the top part of the face, the top part of the head, the forehead area if you will and around the eyes so that kind of looks like eyebrows on a human face but here at the bottom near the neck we also have some longer softer fur and I'm kind of trying to separate uh, the fur there into larger clumps of fur and because the fur on the left is a bit lighter I try not to draw every single hair to avoid producing too much texture and I just try to shade it gently and kind of break it into uh, these slightly larger groups or larger segments of uh, on the right side here as you can see there is going to be a little bit of shadow which is coming from the uh, from the jaw area and from the head itself so I'm making that a bit darker now one of the ways that you can make an area darker when you're working with graphite without spoiling the texture is simply by using a tapered stroke and cross hatching you can just go over that area a little bit with a darker pencil you can maybe soften it a little bit with a brush but the main idea is that you retain the marks and the textures and the shapes that you already put down and you just put down uh, another layer of value on top of it making it a bit darker in the process and I'm doing that because I want the right side of the neck and the right side of the head to be darker overall because like I said my light source is coming more from the left side. Um, now I have a little bit more work to do on the neck area and the rest of the body but I'm just sort of refining the <clears throat> refining the texture of the fur trying to soften some of these marks a little bit because this is uh, in graphite this is a little bit more difficult because the, there are limitations as to how well you can blend it. With, with charcoal you can really soften these marks quite a bit and create that uh, appearance of, of uh, longer softer fur much more easily. Uh, but with graphite you have to use different grades of pencils and you have to kind of make a transition from those darker marks to the lighter ones. Here I'm adding a little bit more darker value to the background here and there so that I can achieve a bit more depth. So like I said, um, you don't want to leave those uh, darker lines hanging there when you draw in graphite pencil. You want to work around them a little bit using some lighter pencils and kind of integrate them into the rest of the drawing a bit better. So basically you have to use uh, different grades when working with graphite pencils you have to use multiple pencils and uh, I recommend using at least four or five uh, different grades now here for this drawing I mainly used some of the darker ones I used a lot of 10b and 14b for some of the well actually I used a little bit less of that 14b I tried to use it sparingly for some of the darkest bits but I used a lot of 10B, 8B and 6B. For the lighter areas I used some 2B and even some HB. Uh, but that's really up to you and I believe that you could do a similar thing with conventional graphite pencils except for the fact that it wouldn't look quite as good on camera because uh, it would be a little bit more reflective and you would be, have to be careful about how you set up your lighting. Um, I'm just uh, doing a bit more shading and a bit more work on the texture of the fur here on the side of the body and kind of punish, putting down some finishing touches. The drawing is almost done. Uh, one of the things that I decided to do here is I decided to add a bit more value to this cheek area 
on the left. Now this area appears almost white in my reference photo but I felt like I needed to add a bit more value there so that the whole nose and mouth part of the face or the head would stand out so that the snout would stand out against the rest of the head because I'm trying to achieve a little, a little bit more depth in my drawing so here I added just a bit more shading in that area and that made the nose area kind of pop out even more so that was my drawing of a wolf if you like my content uh, if you like my channel don't forget to subscribe and also check out my other videos if you like graphite pencils I'm going to be doing a few more uh, drawings in graphite and that would be all for now once again don't forget to check out my patreon for more content and thank you for watching this one I'm going to see you in the next video bye for now